Hi guys, Miss Hargreaves here. We're doing our last new reading lesson before the end of the school year. I think next week you guys are gonna have kind of like a makeup and finish any incomplete work week. Um, if you were doing this at home, then make sure that you're clicking the microphone for each section so it's reading to you. And I'm also gonna read it out loud as I go. It says weather that's out of this world. The word weather probably brings to mind rain, sunshine, and wind. Or you might picture more violent events such as thunderstorms, tornadoes, and hurricanes. But that's just the weather on Earth. What about space? Just as Earth's atmosphere has conditions that change daily, so do, too does space. Scientists call these changing conditions space weather, types of space weather. In our solar system, all space weather starts with the sun. One type of weather event the sun produces is wind. The solar wind is a steady stream of particles that flows out from the sun in all directions. This wind from the sun is quite energetic. It moves at an average speed of 400 kilometers per second. Some gusts even reach 800 kilometers per second. At those speeds, a trip from New York City to Los Angeles would take from five to 10 seconds. Even so, it takes days for the solar wind to travel from the, earth to, from the sun to earth. The sun also produces more violent types of space weather. Solar flares are brief but powerful bursts that send great amounts of radiation into space. Coronal mass ejections, or CME, are even more spectacular events. In a CME, billions of tons of sun's corona, or outer layer, blast out into the solar system all at once. Can space weather affect life on Earth? Yes, but to understand how, let's first look at Earth's magnetic field. And don't forget to look at our text feature here of a picture in a caption. So the sun is an active place producing not just heat and light, but also space weather events. Go to your second page. Earth's magnetic field. Earth is a huge magnet. It has two magnetic poles, north and south. These poles are part of a larger field of magnetic force surrounding the planet. This field forces the solar wind to slip around our planet, much as a tree blocks a breeze. It also reduces the power of solar flares and CMEs. Our text feature here shows a picture and a caption again. Earth's magnetic field shields the planet against the strongest effects of space weather, including CMEs. Space weather's effect on Earth. Weakening solar flares and CMEs isn't the same thing as stopping them completely. However, those space weather events can still affect earthly events. Solar flares can break up radio signals, making long distance communication difficult. This effect is annoying, but temporary. CMEs, however, can cause longer lasting problems. A powerful CME can damage artificial satellites orbiting Earth. This can reduce our ability to send phone calls, weather data, and directions to airplanes and ships at sea. A strong CME can also temporarily disturb Earth's magnetic field, causing what are called geomagnetic storms. Such storms last only a few days, but they can produce surges of electricity that damage our electrical grids. In March 1989, for example, a geomagnetic storm shut down electrical grids in North America and Europe. In Canada, millions of people were without power for up to nine hours. Many scientists believe that more powerful CMEs could shut down our grids for weeks and cause trillions of dollars in damage. It says the lights in U.S. cities are made possible through a series of electrical grids, which a strong CME could damage. Prediction in defense. As with earthly weather, it's good to be prepared for space weather. Businesses and governments are building satellites and electrical grids that can resist CMEs and agencies around the world monitor the sun for dangerous events. These agencies will provide early warning if any solar blasts head our way. If you're tempted to worry about space weather, just keep two facts in mind. First, violent space weather is unusual. Solar flares and CMEs are fairly rare. Second, space is vast. Most CMEs miss Earth entirely. Even those that reach us will have spread out by the time they get here, like smoke spreads out from a fire. Space weather might be important to keep an eye on, but it's the weather here on Earth that matters most when you go outside. Click next to our first question, and there's only eight questions. Which sentence tells the main idea of paragraph one? So we're looking for what this paragraph is mostly about. All four of these things will be included in the, in the paragraph, right? They're all direct quotes from the paragraph. But which one sums up what this paragraph is all about? So in our first paragraph, right, it's when they were talking about the wind and how fast the wind moves, and how quickly you could go from New York to LA, and it takes days for the solar wind to travel from the sun to earth. 
So which is the main idea? Is it mostly about the gust reaching 800 kilometers per second? No, that sounds more like a detail to me. Even so, sorry, my video went out, but you can still hear me, so we're gonna keep going. Even so, it takes days for the solar wind to travel from the sun to earth. Again, detail. This wind from the sun is quite energetic. Again, a detail. One type of weather event the sun produces is wind. That is the main idea because that kind of summarizes what that whole paragraph is about, right? The whole paragraph is about wind, and then the other three things are details about that wind. Click done, and next. Which is not a key detail that supports the main idea of paragraph one. Again, all of these things are gonna be in paragraph one. We want the one that's really not a key detail. Remember the main idea being one type of weather event that sun produces is wind. So we have at those speeds, a trip from New York City to LA would take from five to 10 seconds. Now that was in the paragraph and that's just an example though, not really a detail, a key detail that backs up our main idea. It moves at an average speed of 400 kilometers per second. That is a detail that backs up the sun producing wind, right? Telling us how fast that wind goes. It takes days for the wind to travel from the earth to the sun. Again, backing up that the sun produces wind and that that wind is a steady stream of particles that flows from the sun in all directions. Again, backing up that weather event of wind. The one that's not the best key detail would be at that speed going from New York to LA that would only take five to 10 seconds. So you're just kind of giving an example, get letting you know how fast that would be, but that doesn't really back up the sun actually producing that wind. I'm just giving you an example of the speeds. So click done and next. What's the main idea of paragraph two? So remember paragraph two says the sun also produces more violent types of space weather, such as solar flares and CMEs, right? So the first one says in a CME, there's billions of tons of the sun's corona outer layer. That's not the main idea, right? That's a detail because then that's leaving out the solar flares. Solar flares are brief but powerful bursts. Again, a detail because we're not talking now about the CMEs. The sun also produces more violent types of space weather, such as, right, CMEs and solar flares. So that would be a good main idea of what that whole paragraph is about. Or the CMEs are more spectacular events. That again is a detail because it's leaving out about the solar flares. So our main idea would be the sun produces violent types of space weather. And then details of that being about the CMEs and solar flares. Then click next. What is a key detail the author could add to that paragraph to help support the main idea? Remember, it's about the sun producing violent space weather. So we have when a solar flare erupts, it has a force of 100 million hydrogen bombs. Well, that definitely sounds like violent space weather. Scientists believe that solar flares follow an 11 year cycle. It doesn't really talk about the you know, violent type of space weather. They were observed in 1859. Again, doesn't really talk about the violent um, aspect of the space weather. Or a person needs a solar telescope to see them. Again, not the violent type of space weather. So the one that really talks about what our main idea is, is that when it erupts, it's like a million hydrogen bombs, right? A hundred million. That shows that main idea of the sun producing violent types of space weather. Click done and next. Which best, I, best states the main idea of paragraph four? Earth is a huge magnet, right? It has two magnetic poles, north and south. These poles are part of a larger field of magnetic force surrounding the planet. The field forces the solar wind to slip around our planet. Much as a tree blocks the breeze, it also reduces the power of solar flares. So does it reduce the power of just CMEs? Does it force solar wind to slip around the planet? Remember, that's true, but that sounds like a detail. Its magnetic field protects from all types of space weather, right? From CMEs, from solar wind, from the solar flares, or huge magnetic field from Earth. Again, true, but the best main idea is it's protecting from all types of space weather. And then these other three things are details that go with that. Then click next. You're already down to only three questions left, so stick with me. Which states the best idea, main idea of paragraph six, right? We're talking about CMEs here, that a powerful CME can damage artificial satellites orbiting Earth. 
They reduce our ability to send phone calls, weather data, and directions to airplanes. A strong CME can also temporarily disturb the magnetic field, causing geomagnetic storms, which could last a couple of days, but produce electricity that damages our electrical grids. So can CMEs cause um, disturbance to our magnetic field and harmful storms? Can damage communication and electrical systems people on Earth depend on? Strong CMEs can destroy power grids across Earth that deliver electrical power or it can damage artificial satellites that deliver information to and from Earth. Well, we need one that includes both talking about the communication and those electrical systems, right? Here, they're talking about electrical power, but not communication. Here, we're talking about communication, but not electrical power. So we want the one that talks about damaging communication and electrical power, because that would be the main idea. Our other things would be more of a detail. Then click Next. Main idea of paragraph eight. So as with earthly weather, it's good to be prepared for space weather. Businesses and governments are building satellites and electrical grids that can resist CMEs and agencies around the world monitor the sun for dangerous events. These agencies will provide early warning if any solar blasts head our way. So is it more important to be prepared, prepared for severe weather on earth than space weather? It doesn't really mention that in this um, paragraph. Soon space weather will no longer have any negative effects on earth. Again, it didn't even mention that in that paragraph. Space weather will continue to have negative effects no matter how well people prepare for it or the world's preparing for dangerous effects of space weather. Well, we are, right? Businesses and governments are building grids that can resist those CMEs and we're monitoring to make sure that we're as safe as we can be. Click done and next. And then your last question, we're gonna look at paragraph nine. If you're tempted to worry about space weather, just keep two facts in mind. First, violent space weather is unusual. Solar flares and CMEs are fairly rare. And second, space is vast, right? Space is huge. So most CMEs miss Earth entirely. Even the ones that reach us will have spread out by the time they get here. Space weather might be important to keep an eye on, but what happens on Earth is what matters most at all, right? So earthly weather has many dangerous effects that people should worry about. I didn't say that we needed to worry about what's happening here on Earth, just that we should be aware. People should not fear space weather because violent events are rare and space is vast. Well, it did say, if you're tempted to worry, just keep these things in mind, right? Violent space weather is unusual. And it said that second, space is vast. So I like that one. People can ignore the negative effects of space weather because there's nothing to worry about. Well, it didn't say that. It just said that we shouldn't fear it, right? Because it doesn't happen very often. And most CMEs never reach Earth and they usually spread out by the time they get here. True, but that's more of a detail. So our best answer would be not to fear it because it's rare and space is fast. Click done. And then you are done with this lesson for the week. All right, guys, have a great